Hi gang, Elizabeth here, Dandy Soap Channel, and I have you a new DIY project that I've not seen done before. This is my own idea, so we're going to try it out. The items that you will need is what you see here. We will need the candy cane form. All of these items come from the Dollar Tree. The stocking of your choice from Dollar Tree, and we're going to be using this to cover our candy cane. A pair of scissors. I have this ruler to show you something, some picks of your choice, and of course some ribbon. But the most important part that you're going to need is regular old shopping bags, just plastic shopping bags. So I'm going to clear this off and we're going to get started. First thing we want to do is we've got to prepare our candy cane form. And since I do not have a tablecloth from Dollar Tree, we're going to use plastic shopping bags. Now, if your shopping bags do not have to be the same color, so if you have all white, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But in case you were wondering uh, how to do that, let me just show you. I've got the tail of one. Here's the tail of the other. I am taking and laying that across there, just like that. I'm taking the handles of this one. And I'm bringing the tail of it through there and catching this bag in it. Just like that. And I'm not worried about where it falls or how far up. Because I'm just going to be using this to cover this candy cane form. So you can string as many together as you want or as few together as you like. So like I said, I'm going to have to do this off camera. Because it's just too noisy to try and do this while it's recording. So once again, I'm just pulling that through there just to catch that tail. The only reason why I'm doing this, guys, is so it makes it easier when I start wrapping this around the candy cane. It'll just flow and then I can glue the last piece into place and be done with it. Okay, guys, taking the very end of your candy cane at the top and starting there, and take your plastic bag, and basically what you're going to do is just cover that front edge, but I want it to be kind of rounded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and lay my bag across it, and when I bring it over, I'm going to bring it back over it, just like where that nose up. And because uh, I'm going to try to make mine a little bit rounded on the end, more like a candy cane, and then just start wrapping your plastic bags around that and uh, keep going until you get the whole thing wrapped and do how many it'll take just just keep winding it around your cane until you get it completely covered now when you get your candy cane wrapped with the plastic sacks it's probably going to resemble something like this and it just so happens the way I had those strung together the knots of them ended up right underneath and so the next will cover that up and holds it in place and then when I got to the end here I just tucked my last one in here it took me 18 is what it took and I am got it good and covered these little pieces hanging off don't worry about them because all that will get glued down and then what we're going to do is get our stocking and we're going to be cutting it into layers and detaching everything so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and disassemble your stocking and probably is turn your stocking inside out so that we can get to the inner layer where it's put together. Actually going to see how well I fare just taking my scissors and poking at the thread and they came apart pretty easy. So usually you can break one and it'll let the whole thing come apart and then you just kind of snip the strings and pull a little more in some places it's going to come loose even better so just keep working at that and get your stocking apart just like do the same thing here at the little trim mine has a red velvet trim at the top of it and i want to let the strings loose on that as well so that i can you can see it comes apart really easy when you put uh, scissors to those strings and just break those strings and it'll just keep coming loose for you. 
So I'm gonna jazz. Um, but I figure if you guys are paying attention, you're actually watching the video, you will see and get the gist of what I've been doing and what I'm doing. And uh, as you can see, if you catch that string just right, you can get that stocking apart. So once again, I do apologize for all the pauses and sometimes there will be like a glitch in the video. It is nothing that I mean for you guys to get upset about is simply you don't have to see every bit of that and I definitely don't want you hearing me coughing and sneezing and clearing my throat all the time and um, I do deal with a lot of issues with my teeth and uh, mouth hurting a great deal and I'm trying desperately to wrestle with that and sometimes it's just hard to complete a sentence when your hands are in motion doing something that you really need to be careful and focus on when you're dealing with sharp objects. Uh, all right here. So now we got this disassembled. And I keep every little thing, guys. See this little hanger that that stocking was on? You just never know when you might just need a little strip of something. Okay, now we've got our stocking disassembled. And in order for this to work, and fit on our candy cane and cover it the way that I'm wanting to do this. Like I said, I haven't seen anybody else do this. And I'm not saying that I'm the first and only. I'm saying that I haven't been able to find anything out there that someone has took and converted a stocking onto one of the candy cane forms. And so I am definitely DIYing this one and make a great attempt. The inspiration for this is those picks that I showed you. These picks are my inspiration. I ran across this little one right here, absolutely fell head over heels for it, and found one of these, and I just picked up one of them during a 50% off sale. And this little pick as well. And I have really fell in love with this stocking, and I just did not want to just, you know, it hang there and not get used because our family has had stockings I made years ago and they have just been traditionally used year after year and I didn't want to replace it. So I really wanted to work this whole thing into something that I knew I would keep and I could enjoy looking at it. And th so these two pieces, this burlap with the snowflakes and the red glitter that does not shed, by the way, and these picks are the whole inspiration for this candy cane that I am doing. The whole reason why I'm doing this candy cane wreath. So, I do here, and I'm picking away these strings, guys. So, when you come across these strings after you've picked it out, you may want to go ahead and clean that up so that it does not end up in your design and slow you down when you start working on your wreath. Um, you may have time to fool with it, but if you just go ahead and get that out of your way right now, it is not something you have to go back and do. And uh, hopefully, you know, if you are inspecting, you're just looking to make sure versus having to go through there and work the whole thing after you've been handling it and getting your DIY project completed. So it only takes a moment to go around there and collect all the little strings and just check and see if you've gotten everything off of it so that you can have fun putting your candy cane form together and making your wreath without having to fool with a bunch of string all over the place and getting hung in your glue. <laughs> okay, so let's get to work. Or let's get to having fun. So we need these to be a minimum of two and a half inches wide when we cut these strips in order to fit our candy cane form. So if we lay that out there, you, we're going to be doing cutting these at an angle with that stocking. And eventually you'll just have just a small piece left up here. Now if, for ease of me, I will actually be marking mine the two and a half inches because I want it to be consistent. Okay, so that's what we're after is marking them so that they are consistent. 
and um, just put you a line every two and a half inches and go up your stocking but make sure you stay at an angle we're going at an angle and that is the way that we're going to be cutting our strips and so I know that if I move in here a tad and just keep going up your stocking and then that way when you go to cut and they're going a lot of this will be covered up guys so please don't sweat it just don't even sweat it don't get over anxious about it and since that's going at an angle and just keep marking them at that angle and that's going to be a little spot right there that we're just not going to get it's just a little tiny piece which is fine with me what you want to do is you want to take your stocking and we need our stocking cut at an angle uh, the strips cut at an angle about two and a half inches wide consistently or if whichever size or measurement that you do it needs to be consistent all the way up your stocking now this stocking states that it's 16 inches but it's not it's actually less than that we've torn out the string so we know so if you'll look here i have took and i have marked mine every two and a half inches consistently and I've gone at an angle because of the toe of this boot will give me more length if I go at an angle. If I go straight across, I'm going to get less and not be able to use as much of this fabric. Now, I've took and I've marked it two and a half inches consistently, keeping it at an angle. And what I'll do in order to make it easier for me is I'll go ahead and I'll draw me a line so that I can easily go through there and cut my strips. Now what I'll also do is I will take the other side of the stocking and I'll lay it with it and cut them both at the same time so that my strips are consistent with each other. The red as well as this burlap print. And that's what you'll want to do is make sure that you cut them together at the same time. And then we have this last little piece, and that's all that we're going to lose off of this stocking because we're doing it at an angle. So take this piece that we undone from it and lay them together. And I'm going to put the right side down because that's where my markings are. And just line them up as best you can. That's got that little bit of a lip, but make sure that you get that felt backing lined up with the the other stocking I've got mine lined up about the best I'm going to get it and I'm going to start cutting my strips and I mind that you guys will do the same thing and these strips we are going to be gluing to our candy cane form so just get them cut out so now we're ready to start gluing our strips. And this particular one, you may want to use that at your beginning of your stocking, simply because it's your shortest piece. And now you just have to decide which one you want to start with. Do you want to do the burlap or do you want to do the felt? We go ahead and turn them out into a pile and separate them so that you'll have your pile of strips going there so you can just go grab them and go start at any end you want to i'm going to start at the nose of my candy cane first now that i've got all these separated and in their separate piles and i we want to take whichever strip we decide on either the printed or your felt whichever way you want to lay yours out i of course am going with the print that's why i glued that down and i'm going to glue that strip right across there and you are basically going to be cutting these in half so you'll use one strip in one section and one strip in the other so definitely have your scissors handy so that you can cut as you go and that way you can fit them as you go as well 
and you'll know which way to turn them, whether to turn them this way or that way, depending on which way you're going and how you're wanting to do it and bring that to that inner part right there and so you'll just be gluing your pieces on and you'll have to turn your candy cane form to where it better suits you to where you can see the best and we're just going to be doing that upper part and covering it and just as long as your strip goes all the way down the side is your main thing that you're concerned about if we need to we can use some felt or something else in the rear. For the time being, I'm just going to be bringing mine over the side and around and gluing it into place. And then I will do my red next. This in your printed pile. So I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to cut it in half just as before. And you're going to keep working this all the way up your reef. All the way up your candy cane form. And the square side might be better to put, now that you're starting to go around your round, you might be able to do the angles. But as long as it's covered, that's the main thing. And putting the glue where you need it. And like I say, and I am gluing it directly to my felt or and or my print so that I can... Make sure that I get it lapped over the sides where it needs to be. And then I'm going to roll that back a second. And I'm going to put a, some glue right here in the center. And just that way it makes sure that my felt stays pulled over that side. So that's what we're going to do on our next strip. We will make sure we put glue here. And then we'll place our piece down. And so I'll be using my longer pieces first. Then that way if I need to, I will use the shorter pieces as I go along. And the guys, I've gotten right here. And in this bend, to make this better, take one of your longer pieces. And you're going to go all the way complete. And if you do that with a felt piece, it's going to work out better uh, it because it will stretch more than the burlap will so as you can see I am going to just take and wrap it and um, let me get some glue on there first and I can show you a lot better and then I'm just holding it in place because I've already got my fingers on it underneath and go ahead and get that into place and I'm going to put a little more glue here. Because I need this to go around to the back. And we're going to come on around with it. Just like we were using ribbon. Okay. Bring it all the way around to the back. And then I'm going to come on up. And overlap it onto the current one. And as you can see, that's that one that's cut at an angle. And we're going to utilize that angle to our advantage. So that little point right there, I'm going to put some glue on that. And fasten it down. And right here, you just need to go really slow until you get it right where you want it. And that belt will pull it has a lot more give to it and then just do the rest of the tail there and fasten it down and then your next piece should start straightening out for you and go a little bit better and just in that little curve right there you gotta you help it some and uh, give it a little more encouragement so to speak by pulling on it and getting it to where you need it it's over Get rid of that string and put a dab there. And then just fasten that down. And that'll take care of that curved area that's a little more difficult to get covered. 
And hopefully you guys are faring as well as I am. Um, where it was a split decision to pin that one down, I may have to go back and put a little glue under that edge just to fix it and uh, kind of straighten it out just a little bit. That way it's a little more snugger and a little better finished off. And I am thinking about um, if I want to put something back here, which I probably will. And uh, so I'm thinking over what I would like to place back here that you guys could easily find as well. And I may just do something like some craft paper or just something that will be easy to just put on the back just to make sure all this lumpiness is covered and it's smooth um, so i'm down here at the end and you see all that we have left so what i'm going to do is like we were doing before i was covering up that little end down there and i'm going to go back to the top one and fix it as well so i've got this kind of a rounded piece and i am going to just cap that off and then fold this back and then lay me a strip there. So for the and I'm going to go ahead and just bring it around the back. I'll just make it easier to control and tuck in any differences. Then I'm just folding that over that. I'm not really worried about it being perfect, guys. I'm just trying to cover the end down there. I'm gonna check this front side, make sure it ain't got too mashed down. Get it out of shape. Okay, so we got this end down here glued down and we got that situated. Now, let's go back up here to the top and see if we can't fix this end that I was worried about before. And take my chances and try to pull that up and be really careful because it's going to leave that liner there. So I might just get lucky on this. And just roll it back. Okay, that's got that liner on it from the stocking, the inside of the stocking. So I think it's going to work to my advantage. And I'll just glue directly to it and lay that point, that straight edge that we cut. This is off that round of the bottom of the stocking, remember? And we're going to glue it down on that nose in place. And then once again, like we did on that other side, guys, just going to have to tuck it and fold it to get it to fasten down in there. Okay. Rings. Okay, so I got that. Now I can bring this flat back down. And I'm okay with it having a little bit of a uh, fraying to it like burlap would do. Because that makes it look old-fashioned to me. I really like that. And so right here, I want to make sure that is good and snug. I didn't get it pulled over tight enough when I first did this. So this time, I'm going to make darn sure I get it pulled over tight enough. I think that the easiest thing for me, because I'm using this burlap-covered fabric, and it's color and everything and with the felt I am going to take some craft paper and I'm going to glue it to the back of it and so depending on what stocking you ended up with the craft paper would work because all that's going to do is just cover this up so it's okay just like it is it's really not a necessity but I am going to go ahead and just put a little strip of paper around that I'm not even going to try to measure it or cut it exact. All I'm going to do is take a piece of paper 
that is the width of the back of that and just glue that down and then put me another piece there and um, cut it and just put it on the back just to finish that off and give it a more finished look lay this paper on there and be done with that part I don't think it's gonna hurt anything so like I said you do not have to do this part this is just something that I'm opting to do and uh, just to kind of close everything off and finish it and also it will help be helpful too if you do happen to have any kind of loose ends the rubbing alone will keep it from fraying and keep your fabric from fraying craft paper glued onto the back here and I'm just trimming off any of the excess that I don't need I mean you know as you can see it looks really good it's got that old timey look to it which is what I am loving and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, you know definitely give me some comments down below like it don't like it uh, wasn't easy didn't have fun you know, but I would love to hear positive things. You know, let me know how it, how what you think. You know, how's it looking to you? I see us. Okay, so let me clean off all of this and let's get to our bow making and putting our picks on. Okay, guys, so we're at that point where we want to put some ribbon on, and I've been looking at these picks, and I believe I want to use this larger one. Now, guys, you know, is the awesomest looking on this. And so I'm definitely going with the red burlap. I got this at Dollar General. It was $2. And it is the two and a half inch with the wire in it. This one has got all the different words, and it has the burlap as well. But I really was not wanting to put any, per se, green in my design. I had not anticipated on doing that. So, I think what I'm going to do, though, is let's start out with this ribbon underneath here. Had I made my decision already, I would have already run this ribbon underneath here. And you're going to pull out a right much of this, right around a yard, about three feet, in order to, so that when you bring this bow up and you tie it into a bow, it's going to lock all this down, and then you'll be able to move this as you need to. Really good before I taunt it down. That way everything's flowing where I want it to, and I want my tails. You can make your tails go either way you want. You can bring them both in this direction, or you can make one go up there. However you want to do it. And you make them as big or small a hoop as you want. Just like tying your shoe. You just have to work it a little bit and get it all situated until you're satisfied with how it looks and what it's shaped like and which way it's going. And just get satisfied with your tie get everything sized up now guys I apologize that I did not get to finish showing you the bow unfortunately there was a technical difficulty and that did not get recorded and I am not going to go backwards but I will tell you this when we piled them before we placed them here and then we tied this this bow began to fray. While I liked it so good, I actually started pulling these out on purpose to give it that old-timey, worn, frayed look. But basically, these two hoops are piled on top of each other. You can take a piece of string and tie them taunt, and then you tie this across it. And you can do just like I did. You can put two loops above and this tied in between the four. So two up here, two down here. You can fluff them out and do whatever you like. Uh, additionally, the pick is just slid in there. I literally just took and just stuck it underneath the bow. And the bow is not even glued or anything into place. And I literally just stuck it down through there. And I had not been bent that or 
permeated this bow um, because I wanted to tell y'all what happened. However, on this bow, the fray that I'm able to get, I'm doing that by just allowing it to do what it was doing for, and that's just pull a few strings off of the side, and you can fray it as much as you like or as little as you like. And since it was already fraying from the pulling and the friction of tying it, I'm just pulling a little bit more off of it. And basically on my pick, the pick has a wire in it that's got it tied together. And so I'll probably leave it just like that since it's doing okay. And really it will be kind of camouflaged by the tails of this ribbon. This burlap does not have a wire in it. But burlap being burlap, it's stiff. Stiff enough for what I'm doing here. And this particular candy cane will not be placed outside. This is for my craft room here for my own personal little decoration and something that I wanted to do. And I am so glad you guys were here with me to enjoy this. And I certainly hope that you guys enjoyed it too, taking a Christmas stocking from the Dollar Tree, using a Dollar Tree candy cane form and making us a candy cane wreath. Um, using craft paper on the back just to kind of make sure that everything's sealed off. And as you can see, the ribbon is tied around the back there. And then as far as your tails, you can do these straight like they are now. And uh, that looks pretty good. I mean, they look okay uh, just like that. Or you can take and cut them at an angle. And I'm still just kind of freeing them off. Um, you can cut them shorter if you like. And make them a little closer to the same length if you like. It really depends on you. I think for me, I kind of like them like they are right here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll put a little... We'll put a dovetail in it. And I'll just do these the straight way, just like that. And actually, these need to be the same length. So let me cut that off. Make them the same length. And then the shortcut, you guys know the shortcut to dovetail. And you are basically turning the edge to the left. And from the right to the left, cutting into that corner. And then same thing here. Turn it to the left. This is if you're right-handed. And then cut into the edge. Just like that. And I'll make your dovetails. And so now we have our wreath finished. And we are at the end of this DIY. And I certainly appreciate you all coming along. And enjoying doing the candy cane wreath made with a Christmas stocking. So... And with the calculation of the ribbon here and with the wreath form along with the stocking, that would have been $2. And then the ribbon, depending on where you bought it, uh, we used probably a dollar's worth. And then this pick, I know I gave a dollar and 25 cents for it. So all in all, we have about $4 and 25 cents in this incredible wreath. And we would have even less than that, um, had I chosen a different uh, pick or went with a cheaper pick or just used pieces out of it. And, of course, the ribbon you can't beat. I love this ribbon. It's absolutely beautiful. And I am glad I went with the burlap that has the writing on it. Well, gang, we are now at the end of our DIY for today. And I certainly hope that you enjoyed this and learned some things. And uh, we definitely transformed a Christmas stocking into a candy cane wreath form and made it into a candy cane wreath. And I certainly hope you enjoyed this and that you learned something and have fun. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. See that one right there? And uh, share this with a family or a friend on all your social media groups. If you're not already part of the game, come over to the Dandy Soap DIY. You'll see the link below and join the Facebook group so we can chat beyond the comments here on YouTube. If you're not already a subscriber, I certainly hope you do become one now. And uh, if you will, stay tuned 
and hit that notification to get them all. That way, every time we put up a new video, you're the first one to know. So until the next DIY, guys, you have a very, very Merry Christmas and a dandily crafty day. This is Elizabeth signing off. See you on the next DIY.